Hey, my name is Steven and welcome to the Curvy Woodworking Channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how I put together my floating bed frame made completely of solid walnut. So to get this project moving, I'm going to start with the steel base that will be underneath the mattress. Now this has the potential to be a very heavy build very quickly. So I'm going to split this up into four different sections so that I can easily pack it up and deliver it to my house at a later time. So to make sure I have a perfect square for each of these four quadrants, I'm going to be using a template that I've already measured to be perfectly square. If I didn't do this with the template and I allowed there to be some variations, when I combined everything together in the end, I would have some gaps in there and there would be awkward gaps next to the bed. Once I tack it up, I'm going to put a full bead of weld across there and then the next step is to clean it up. Now I have the exterior complete, I'm going to start to work on the interior X. So that X is actually going to do two things. It's going to support the mattress so that I don't have any springs falling through. And it's also going to support a central post that I'm going to have in the center of that X. The purpose of insetting these legs this far within the bed frame is to give the appearance that the bed frame will be floating when you walk into the room and you see it for the first time. For those central posts I mentioned earlier, I'm going to be using a heavier duty piece of steel, two and a half inch by two and a half inch, just because it'll be a load bearing post on the bottom of all of these prefabricated frames. So this bed frame is going to be like a big jigsaw puzzle rather than taking measurements and then finding small discrepancies. I'm going to assemble everything and I'm going to start to drill pile of holes through there. These pile of holes I'll ream out to be bigger later on and they're going to house the bolts that will hold the final product all together. I'm also going to take this opportunity to start drilling holes along the exterior of the steel frame and that's going to connect the steel frame to the wooden screw later on. The final step is to get a coat of primer across 100% of the steel frame and on the bottom post I'll just use some black spray paint because that's the only part that you'll see. Okay now we're done the steel base it's time to switch to the skirt around the steel. So for efficiency I'm going to prepare all of the lumber that I have for this project for both the skirt and the headboard. The skirt is made from one inch walnut and the headboard is made from six quarter or an inch and a half walnut. So we're going to get the rough dimensions on the table saw first before we give ourselves a flat side on the planer. Once we attain this flat side I'm going to take it over to the jointer and I'm going to push that flat side against the guard. I'm going to run the narrow section on the bottom against the cutting blade and that's going to ensure that I have a perfect 90 degree between those two faces. Now in other situations you would use a table saw to get a perfect 90 on the other side but I'm well within the width that I can put it through the DeWalt planer once again and now I have it perfectly perpendicular with one another on all the joints. I'm going to take out the one inch sections from the pile and I'm just going to cut it to the dimensions around the steel frame that I constructed earlier. Okay, so now that the steel frame is done, I'm going to be taking the walnut skirt pieces that I have that's gonna go around the border, and I'm going to be putting a dado in there so that it can slide directly into the steel L angle running along the border of the bed frame. Okay, so to get my dado pieces into the skirt, I'm just going to be putting in a dado blade into the table saw, and it's just multiple blades stacked on each other to help remove a bulk of material in one go, rather than taking a bunch of passes through on the skinny blade.
For the first two pieces I was able to push them directly through but you see I'm a little more careful on the third piece. Now the third piece is actually going to be at the feet of the bed so the end grains are going to be protruding along the outside so I need to both start it within the wood and I need to finish it before the wood end. Afterwards I'm going to use a chisel just to clean up that edge to ensure I have enough area that the steel can slide in without hitting the curvature that would occur from the cutting blade. Okay, so now we have the skirt complete, we're going to start to work on the big walnut headboard. As I mentioned earlier in the video, I cleaned up all the wood for the headboard at the same time when I was cleaning the wood for the skirt. So I'm just going to jump straight ahead to the glue up. Now this is a really large glue up, I have a total of 9 lengths of walnut. And I'm going to call everybody on deck, so I got my dad helping out and Darko as well. Essentially this is a time crunch, I need to make sure that I have proper compression through all the clamps before the glue actually begins to set. Now I have the exterior pieces of steel along with those two pieces of timber running perpendicular with the headboard to keep everything straight while I'm compressing the pipe clamps. I also use the tape on top to help ensure that the glue that's pushing out from the headboard will not bind with the pipe clamps. Once the clamps are off you're going to have a lot of beads from the glue that have solidified so just take a scraper and start to remove these. If you have the option, try to remove these beads around 45 minutes after you've done the glue up. They're going to harden to a point where they're still easily removable either by hand or with a light scraper. It will save you a lot of headache. Also minimize the amount of sanding that you need to do. I just rough sanded up to 30 grit so I had a smooth surface so I could take it to the table saw and cut the final length to the dimension that I require. Now I'm never a fan of doing epoxy pours but because I save so much money on this I have to put some epoxy in the knots that are naturally in the wood. I figured I'd just use a straight black epoxy. I do like that look between the walnut and epoxy. So I'm just going to be using some tuck tape on the bottom and I'm really going to reinforce it. I'm putting more tuck tape than I need to because a couple minutes now and a couple lengths of tape is not worth a potential $40 to $50 small epoxy pour at the end of the day. I'm then going to be using a hot glue gun and I'm going to be making a small little mound all around all of these knots and that's just going to help keep the epoxy within that section so no overflow occurs. So after we poured the epoxy, it still didn't cure after three days. We then realized it was due to the resin part A. There's some crystallization occurring on the bottom over here. Typically you would have that if it's just sitting on the shelf for too long. It caught me a bit off guard because this is the first time we opened up this container. So the next step now is to remove the excess epoxy and we're going to complete a second pour to remediate this problem. Now in theory that all sounds good. I'm going to remove the epoxy, I'm going to put some new epoxy in there. The only problem is that the final texture of this epoxy was a mixture of molasses, rubber, and it was very, very sticky. So it was gunking up all of the blades I was using to try and remove that material. So after a painful day, I removed it and I was able to complete my secondary epoxy pour. More bad news. Two of them I could not resolve with that secondary epoxy pour. There was a small layer of gunk that was unable to be removed from the outside and it wouldn't allow the new epoxy to bind to the wood. So these will be hidden within the mattress line. I decided to go with uh, standard bow ties which is pretty typical for tables and headboards. I tried to veer away from that for this project but realistically at the end it actually did end up looking I would say better than the epoxy I put in the knot. So I was very happy with it. I'm then going to be putting a 45 degree chamfer along the exterior of the headboard. One of the challenges of working with solid hardwood, especially on a project of this size, is the seasonal movements that occur due to the changing moisture content in the air. Now this is a constant change that's going to occur through the lifespan of this headboard being used. 
So to minimize, not remove, but minimize the effect that the changing moisture content will have on this headboard, I'm going to be cutting in some slots and then inserting some L channels into those slots. Now I'm going to use some Osmo oil before I install the L channel and that's just to help resist moisture penetrating into the wood underneath since obviously I will not be able to attain that later on. But even with the L channel, I'm going to be using standard wood screws, but I'm going to make sure I ream out the holes on the L channel a bit bigger to allow for that movement. Yep. Okay, now we're in good shape for the headboard. We're going to start working on the gray side tables. So lucky for me, I'm painting the side tables a solid color so I can use any pieces of wood I find throughout the shop. I found this piece of three quarter inch plywood with the pine veneer on top. Now I'm not a fan of the pine look, but remember I'm going to be painting this with a solid gray color. I'm then going to cut a 45 degree chamfer into all the pieces so that I can prepare it to glue it all up together. Once again, I'm not worried about the color. I'm just going to be putting a standard edge banding along the face of it to give it that nice clean edge. Once again, it's going to be painted gray so you will not have that awkward discoloration that you currently see between the pine and the white edge banding. With the side table boxes in place, I still need to create the drawers. So I'm going to be making a box once again, but whenever I make a drawer, I always ensure that I have a dado installed into the pieces so that I can fit everything together with relative ease and ensure that it is at a perfect 90 degrees with one another. an additional level of complexity I got some undermount slides and now the drawer is going to look like it's naturally floating outside of the side table. Okay so unlike the bed frame which is going to be a walnut with an Osmo oil finish for the side tables I'm just going to be spray painting it flat gray and I'm going to be using a lacquer finish. I'll put three coats in total and I'll sand 320 grit in between each coat. For the first coat application, I'm going to be very generous with the lacquer. I'm going to flood everything. I may have some runs occurring, but I'm not concerned about that, especially because I will be sanding. It's just to get any of the high points out, but I would like that full coverage on the first pass through to see where I may have some issues on the next couple of coats. Now I have the box and the drawers complete, I still need to have a face for those drawers and I have some leftover pieces of walnut, just the cut off pieces from the earlier section. So I'm finally going to be using this new drum sander I have and once I cut those two pieces in half to have a mirror image of the grain, I'm going to be completing a glue up to combine everything together but before I do that, I need to make sure I have a 90 degree edge on all the pieces that are going to be glued. So you get a sneak peek of what the Osmo oil looks like when it reacts with walnut. It looks really nice. So I'm going to let the Osmo oil sit on there for approximately 5 to 10 minutes, allow the wax time to set within and strengthen the walnut before I wipe off the excess material. Now how do I get these drawer faces to sit perfectly within the boxes I created earlier? And the answer is simple. I'm going to be using some cards and I'm going to be placing them on the outside and that's going to be a uh, hold the distance I have from the edge of the drawer face to the edge of the box. I'm then going to put some two-sided tape on the inside of the drawer face, 
pull it out while it's temporarily holding onto that two-sided tape and then I'm going to fasten it from the inside. Now jumping over to the big part of the build. I'm going to be doing a dry fit between the headboard and the bed frame assembly I completed earlier. I also have Darko to help me out and we're going to be installing some fasteners along those two pieces mentioned earlier and that's to give me a final location when I bring it to my house I can just slide those two right into each other so this dry fit is very beneficial at this stage. So finally we're at the point where I can start to disassemble this and start delivering the steel pieces to my house. I still need to place the Osmo oil finish along the skirt along the outside and the headboard but at least by removing these steel pieces I can both open up the shop and I can start the assembly in my house before everything else is delivered. Okay, so before I put my Osmo oil finish on there, I'm going to be sanding up to 320 grit. I have it previously done up to 220. This is just a final sand right before I put the finish on. I think I mentioned this in every video, but looks like I'm going to do it again. Before you sand every single grit, make sure that you get a pencil and you score the entire surface across. You're going to sand with every grit all the way up to 320 until that pencil line disappears. Once that pencil line disappears, you're going to rescore it and you're going to go up another grit level to get that perfectly smooth and consistent finish. Okay, we're at the fun part of the build. I'm going to be using an Osmo oil to put some finish on the headboard. So I'm first going to use a Bondo scraper to spread around the bulk of the Osmo oil across. I'm then going to be using a small paintbrush to get the sides along with any portions that I missed with the Bondo scraper. The buffing wheel is going to help me get a perfect finish. So I'm going to take three or four passes through with the buffing wheel, remove all the excess Osmo material until I get a perfectly smooth finish. I'm going to do the exact same process for the skirt on the outside, but these pieces are too small to actually use the buffing wheel. So after I place it on the back and wipe off the excess, I'm going to be flipping it over and I'm going to put it on these small stands with nails to minimize the area impacted because I want to keep the finish as consistent as possible. On both pieces, I'm going to be putting two separate coats and every coat that you put on both helps the shine along with strengthens the wood. If it was a table, I'd probably go up to three or four coats. However, as this being a headboard, I'm just gonna stick with the two. Okay, so now we have the individual portions of the bed frame done. It's time to deliver it to the house and assemble it for the first time. So the way I'm going to be attaching the side table to the headboard and the headboard to the wall is by using a French cleat system. Now imagine that this is the wall and I have this piece fastened against that wall. I'm going to have the same angle cut on the headboard and I'm now going to have these two resting against each other and that's going to lock the headboard into place.
Thanks for watching my video on how I put together my custom floating bed frame. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe, hit that alert button, and to like this video.